Sorry about the delay, I got caught up with work and the other video, the audio glitched out, so I had to reshoot the whole thing. But anyways, here is the full tutorial start to finish from downloading to how to use it, ragdolls, and physics for Source Filmmaker. Okay, so what you'll need to do is you will head to the link that I put in the video that will take you to SFM Fizz. Uh, that is the Source Filmmaker physics that you will need for ragdoll creation. What you'll do is you'll click on the code and you will just download the zip, that will give you the file. You'll head to downloads, right click, and extract. And now that that's extracted, you'll just click on it, you'll go into Simpy's master. You'll select these top three files here, so click on them, right click, and then cut them. Next, you will need to find your Source Filmmaker folder, go to Steam. Right click, go to Properties, Installed Files, and Browse. This is where Source Filmmaker is, so you just click on Game, right click, and paste these three folders. I already have these here, so it's going to tell me that I already have them. But, once again, you would just put them in. If you already have them, replace the files. And now we will launch Source Filmmaker. Okay, now that we have Source Filmmaker opened up, just create a random session. I'll name it Test1, since this is a test on the physics. And go ahead and load a map. We will use, uh, I will use uh, 2 for it as an example. Okay, so now that you're in 2 for it, just go ahead and uh, zoom out. Here we are. And what we're going to do is we'll use this setting right here. So, first off, we're going to need our uh, scout later in game. Let's go ahead and press F11. And we are just going to run from the spawn all the way back to where we had left our camera. We're going to, like I said, be using the scout in a later part of the film as a test of the ragdoll animation. Go ahead and press F11 again. Make sure you're here. And now it is time for us to go ahead and start the physics and testing with them. So what we'll do is we will use a simple model. Um, I last used the pyro, so we'll actually just use a bit off of him. We will use the fuel tank that you get when you kill him. So we'll open up that, and it will spawn in right here. And actually, we're going to go ahead and spawn in a second one, because there is something that we'll need to explain in a couple seconds. So once again, go to new model, scroll down, and pyro grip 07. So there is our second one. So real quick, we're just going to move it out of the way. So now, in order to get our physics extension, what we need to do is we need to actually rig the model. So go over here, right click, rig, rig physics. And we will do the same with the second fuel tank. So once again, rig physics. And now when you click on the tank, you'll see uh, rigid bodies. You'll click on that and that alone, and it will bring you to a bunch of new uh, things. So for this one, uh, tank number one, we're going to leave this specific setting right here called kinematic, we're going to leave that all the way down. Uh, for pyrogib 2, the second fuel tank, we're going to turn kinematic all the way up. Now, real quick, important uh, note, doing this, uh, messing with the physics with all of time selected, like I currently have, as you can see, uh, down here, this will cause the physics to not work, so what you need to do, and keep in mind every time you do this, always select a portion of time that you're currently using. You just set the bar here in the middle, kinematic is turned on for the right one, and for the left one, kinematic is turned down. Now, the last thing we need to do before we have our physics is we just need to run Symphys, or SFM physics animation. And as you can see, almost instantly, one of the field tanks has disappeared, uh, because the playhead is at the middle of the video. So, we go ahead and put the playhead back at the start of the video, and both field tanks are here. Now, field tank 1, when we play the video, will fall through the floor and disappear, and field tank 2 will stay there. And that is because kinematic has been turned on for field tank 2. And what kinematic is, is essentially it turns a prop into a static prop or a non-static prop. Uh, and since field tank 1 is a non-static prop, it will fall, whereas the static prop, field tank 2, will sit there. So, now that you know how to make a static and non-static prop, you will probably be wondering, well, how do I stop it from falling to the floor, like right there? This is where you will 
finds the real pain of uh, the physics is the physics engine cannot register the floor. It doesn't see any of this. Um, so whenever you play it back, it will fall through the floor. This means you will need to create your own artificial floor. So the easiest way, in my opinion, to do that is we will go to wall and uh, let's search for a good one, the combine. There it is, this one right here. This is uh, a good flat surface wall, which is really good for setting the floor, what we want. Now, before you move the wall, make sure you select all of time so you can actually move it without it resetting. Uh, just press Control A, that way you can move the wall and it won't teleport back to its place. It will register that you're just moving its position. So we move that forward, we will rotate it down, and uh, we'll just kind of place it right about there. In order to make sure this works, we'll go ahead and play it real quick. Now, as you can see right there, it still falls through. The reason I taught you the difference between kinematic and non-kinematic is because we will have to do the same thing for our invisible walls. So if you come over here and you rig physics... Now, real quick, before we turn the kinematic on, make sure you select only a portion of time once again. Otherwise, the physics won't work. Then you turn kinematic on. You can then rig and run the simulation. And this time, when you play it back, the fuel tank has collision, as you can see. Now, also you can see that the fuel tank kind of floats a little bit high. There is a slight invisible wall, so to fix that, we will just put the plane head back to the start, select all of time, move it down below the floor, and rerun the simulation. Always select the time. That is, that is the pain. You have to do this constantly back and forth, but you get used to it after a while. Now when we play the simulation, it actually falls just slightly too low, so we'll once again just play back time, put it right below the floor. That should be good. Uh, an inch lower. We will rig the simulation, and one final time we'll play it from the start. There we go. A little glitch. Um, but as you can see, this time it looks pretty good. It collides with the floor just where it should. Now, you might notice when it's falling, it has this weird little bump right here, and then it falls over. Um, you will just have to kind of mess around with it manually, and since this is a small static singular prop, it's a bit harder uh, to mess with. Also, make sure for your invisible walls to hide them from your video. Just toggle the visibility, and that way, when you play it back, you still have your floor, but you cannot see it. Um, now that we know how physics work and how to make a kinematic and non-kinematic prop and how to set up the floor, what we are going to do is we are going to make a quick animation using our scout. Let's go ahead and delete the two pyro tanks and we're going to create a new model. I'm once again going to use the pyro. Uh, when you're using full body models, you want to use HWM. So we'll go ahead and open that up. And here we have our pyro. So once again, selecting all of time, then we're going to click on our pyro, and we're just going to move him into a more convenient position. Now we're just going to center our camera around him. And I think the first thing we should do before we do any sort of physics is we should go ahead and record our scout. So click the record button, click record, pull out a pistol or a shotgun, and uh, just go ahead and start shooting. Alright, there we go. So, now, let's head back to the work camera. <clears throat> Select camera 1, because we want this nice overhead shot to demonstrate everything. Now when we play it back... So now let's put the playhead back to the start, and it is time to incorporate the physics into the pyro. It is very simple. It's just a repeat of everything we've already done. So, rig, rig physics... Now, I will say one thing to note. You will notice when we click on rigid bodies, you'll, you'll see a lot more options. And the reason why is when I hold control, you can see there are multiple bones and multiple joints of the Pyro character model because he's a character model. And so there are more points that you can manage. So 
that means every part of his body can be controlled. So I could turn his head kinematic and only his body would fall, but his head would anchor his body to that position. And what that means is we'll go ahead and just run it real quick uh, to kind of show it. But real quick, uh, side note, the, the more bones, the longer it takes to load. Just wanted to point that out. Anyways, as I was saying, uh, so what happened is, geez, it does get a little uh, broken at times. Let's set the playhead back to the star. That is the one thing about rigging only specific body parts. Um, you will have to mess with it occasionally. But if it was to run like I was imagining it would, his head, like as you can see here actually, stays in the perfect position while his body, which hasn't been anchored by kinematic, moves around constantly. And so that is what happens when you use kinematic on a single part. Anyways, we'll go ahead and rewind, because I do not want him to have kinematic. Uh, we simply just want the pyro to have physics. So all we have to do is run the physics engine, wait for it to load, put the playhead back to the start, and it's a little messed up. Like I said, it, sometimes it runs flawlessly, other times it doesn't. I personally believe, yes, it is. So as you can see, hang my opinion is his boot right here is slightly clipping into the ground so we'll give him just a little bit of space and hopefully that should help fix the problem we were having uh, you have to select all of time and so now that we have that you once again run the simulation this time it should fix his body or hopefully you, you don't want to you don't want to go on a limb and say anything definitively now unfortunately this actually did not fix it like i thought so instead of what I'm going to do, since it's a simple task, is I'm actually just going to create a second model and redo the whole thing. Since we moved this certain model around many times and we've went back in time, it's probably glitched out. So it's best to just start a new model from scratch and move it into position and try it with the new model. So once again, we will rig in with physics. Let's just make sure that everything is to our liking. Uh, real quick while we're here, friction, bounce, shape, all of these things you can change if you want. So you can add more force, so he has a bigger impact, less force. Uh, shape, what that means. Basically, currently, from my memory, there are only two different shapes for the physics engine currently. There is all the way up, which is sphere, and then all the way down, which is box. Box, as you can imagine, would have more of a boxy feeling, so it would be a little bit more stiff uh, when it fell. Whereas the sphere, it would roll around a little bit more with the physics. Um, you have bounce, so we can go a, a bigger bounce, a littler bounce, friction, all of that. Anyways, uh, so we have everything the way we need it, so once again, we will just rig the simulation. Now, like I said, don't worry, if it doesn't go perfect, you'll just have to give it a couple of tries. Uh, this one seems to be really promising. This, this is why... You, there we go. Yeah, see? He's perfect. So now, when we play back the animation, it should look pretty good. Uh, let's go ahead and click on camera 1, deselect that, and we'll play it back. Now, here, the only problem is uh, our scout takes a little too long to shoot. So what we can do, uh, since that didn't look too good, is we can fix it by just going to the clip and uh, right-clicking on the film, going to clean up, manage takes, and we'll just delete take one. And then we'll simply just re-record. So here we are again, got our pistol, and... Now, when we play it back, now it will always have a different falling animation, you'll have to tinker with it a lot, but that is essentially the simple way of creating physics, um, because the other ways uh, involve using a motion capture suit, which, you know, not everyone has one of those lying around, and it's a pretty extensive process. The other one, though, uh, the real problem is you could animate everything to your liking, which, depending on how much time you put into it, it could look good, but typically it won't look as smooth. It'll be a little bit more rough 
um, and it, it genuinely just takes longer. So if you just want a quick ragdoll, this is the best option. Uh, with that being said, that's essentially the whole ragdoll tutorial, everything from the installation to the finished product, and go ahead, mess around with it, see what you think. Hopefully this helped you with ragdolls, because it is a bit of a process, and there really isn't much like information on how to do it, so hand animating it is a pain, and you know, sometimes you just really want a quick animation, so hopefully this helped with it, and uh, good luck on your source filmmaking.